Last week, I mentioned to you that this week we would be working on um, geometry, specifically uh, quadrilaterals in a hierarchy. So before we begin, let's go over our vocabulary. So we have attributes, and that's characteristics or features of a shape. We have congruent, that means exactly the same. It could be the same shape, the same angle. We have parallel, lines that will never touch, even, even when extended, they'll never touch. Perpendicular are lines that cross making a right angle. Intersecting are lines that cross each other but don't necessarily make a right angle. An angle is formed when two lines uh, or arrays come from a common point. So the common point would be the vertex. There's the first line and there's the second line. An acute angle measures less than 90 degrees. An obtuse angle measures more than 90, but less than 180, because 180 would be a straight line. A right angle measures exactly 90 degrees. It forms a perfect L. An isosceles triangle, and I showed you last week an easy way to remember isosceles. You use the L to draw a triangle around those two letters. And since those two letters are the same, that means it has two sides that are the same. Same thing goes for scaling. If you were to write it and draw a triangle around those letters, those two letters are different, which means that in a scaling triangle, none of the sides, it doesn't have any that are the same length. And then an equilateral triangle has all sides measuring the same length. Now we also talked about quadrilaterals, and we said that a quadrilateral is any polygon with four sides. Quadrilaterals can be classified by their angle or pair of sides. And I referred it back to a quad. A quad has four wheels, therefore quadrilateral is a shape that has four sides. Now we said that a parallelogram is a shape that has two pairs of parallel sides. So those two are parallel and those two are parallel. A trapezoid only has one pair of parallel sides because the other the other parasites would eventually cross. A rectangle, we said, was a parallelogram, okay? And the reason it's a parallelogram is because a parallelogram is any shape that has two uh, pairs of parallel sides, and this one definitely has two. There's the first one, and there's the second pair. Now, the rest of the definition for a rectangle is that it has four right angles right here. A rhombus is also a parallelogram because these uh, two sides are parallel and these two sides are parallel. So it definitely, definitely has two pairs of parallel sides. And it also says that all its sides have to be the same length. Now, sometimes you will see it kind of stretched out a little bit. Even though it's stretched out, all the sides are still the same length. So it's still a rhombus. A square is a rectangle, and the reason it says it's a rectangle is because a rectangle has four right angles. Well, so does a square. The rest of the definition says that all sides measure the same length. That is the reason a square can be a rectangle, because remember, the definition of rectangle is that it has four right angles. But the definition of square says that all sides have to measure the same length. That's the reason a rectangle cannot be a square because a rectangle has two short sides and two long sides. They don't all measure the same length. And then it also says that a square can also be called a rhombus. Now the reason it says that is because a rhombus uh, has all sides measuring the same length. Well, so does a square. The only difference is that a square can't be called a rhombus because sometimes when that rhombus is stretched out, it'll make it so it has two obtuse angles and two acute angles. So this question says, circle all the possible names for the following shape. Now, if we look through each name, okay, is it a polygon? Is it made up of line segments? Is it a closed shape? Well, yes, it is. So it can be a polygon. Is it a rhombus? Now, remember, the definition of rhombus was that all sides measure the same length. Well, no, it's not a rhombus. Is it a quadrilateral? Yes, because it has four sides. So it's definitely a quadrilateral. Is it a parallelogram? Does it have two sets of parallel sides? Well, it has one right here. That's one set. 
and it has another one here. That's two sets. So yes, it is a parallelogram. Now, is it a square? Well, remember, a square can be a rectangle, but this shape right here is a rectangle. Can that be called a square? No, it cannot. And is it a rectangle? Yes, it is. So this shape can fall under polygon, quadrilateral, parallelogram, and rectangle. This one says, which two shapes can be described as quadrilaterals with all congruent sides? Now remember, we need a quadrilateral, which is a shape with four sides, and they have to be congruent. And the definition for congruent is the same, okay? Congruent sides. Well, there's only one shape that has congruent sides. It can be a square, but remember, there is also another name for square, or square can be called something else. What else can a square be called? Well, a square can also be called a rhombus. So if you thought of any of those two shapes, you would be correct, square and rhombus. Now this one says, which shapes are special cases of another shape? This is where hierarchy comes in. Now this means that when you have a shape, that shape, that specific shape can fall under different categories. So this says groups of quadrilaterals are classified by their properties. Think about these questions. How many pairs of opposite sides are parallel? Which sides have equal lengths? How many right angles are there? A trapezoid has exactly one pair of parallel sides. So if we look at these shapes, we have this one and this one would be parallel. These would eventually cross up here. This one and this one would be parallel. These would eventually cross. And the same goes for the two shapes on the bottom. Now, a parallelogram is a four-sided shape or a quadrilateral. And it has two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel and equal. So for example, a parallelogram Reminds me of a, like a slanted rectangle. This and this side would be parallel as well as this and this side. So it has two pairs of parallel sides, just like a rectangle, just like a square, and just like a rhombus. A rectangle has four right angles. So any of these shapes, including the squares, would be rectangles. A rhombus has all sides the same length can be a square because a square also has all sides the same length. But this is what I was talking about. This right here is a rhombus, but notice that it doesn't have right angles like a square does. That's the reason a rhombus can't be considered a square. A square has all sides the same length and all angles are right angles, okay? Based on this information, all sides the same length, that's the definition of a rhombus. That's the reason a square is a rhombus, and all angles are right angles. That's the definition of a rectangle. That's the reason a square is considered a rectangle. Now this question says, what statement is true about the relationship between squares and rectangles? Option A says, rectangles are never squares. Well, let's think about that. Rectangles are never squares. Well, that is true because it's actually the opposite. And if we look at B, it says rectangles are always squares. Well, no, that's not true. Rectangles are never squares. Uh, squares are rectangles, but not the other way around. C says rectangles and squares always have four right angles. Now, Although this is true, both rectangles and squares always have right angles. Although this is true, this is not talking about the relationship between them. And the question is about their relationship. So because of that, C can't be a correct answer. D says, rectangles and squares are always, always have congruent sides. Rectangles and squares always have congruent sides. Again, although this is true, 
uh, specifically for the square. Uh, it is not for the rectangle. So D cannot be my answer choice. The best answer choice for this question is A. The next problem says, which statement is true? Every rhombus is a square. Well, based on what we read earlier, it's actually the other way around. The square is a rhombus, but a rhombus cannot be a square. So this is not true. B says every rectangle is a square. Again, based on what we read earlier, it said that a square can be a rectangle, but a rectangle cannot be a square. B can't be um, correct because it is false. Now, a rhombus can't be a square um, because the definition of square states that it always has right angles and a rhombus doesn't always. A rectangle uh, has, although the, the definition says that it has all right angles just like a square, the problem is that the square has all sides measuring the same length and a rectangle doesn't. C says every rectangle is also a parallelogram. Well, that is true because every rectangle has two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. And D says every trapezoid is a parallelogram. Now, the definition of parallelogram means that it has two pairs or two sets of opposite sides that are parallel. A trapezoid only has one, this one and this one. So D can't be our correct answer choice. The best answer option is C. Which statement is false? Now we're looking for a false statement. A says a trapezoid is a rhombus. A trapezoid is not a rhombus because a rhombus is a parallelogram and a trapezoid is not. So this statement is actually false. But let's read the rest of our answer choices before we, made our, we make our final choice. B says a square is a rectangle. That is true. And we're looking for a false statement. So we're going to cross that out because that one is true. C says a rhombus is a quadrilateral. Well, does it have four sides? Yes, it does. So that is a true statement. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a false statement. D says a rectangle is a parallelogram. Well, does it have two pairs of opposite sides? Yes, it does. So it can't be D. Our best answer choice would be A. This one says a square, a rectangle, a trapezoid, and a rhombus all belong to which group of shapes? Well, let's analyze each group. Are they all squares? Well, is a rectangle a square? No. Is a trapezoid a square? No. Is a rhombus a square? So square can't be our answer. Are they all parallelograms? Do they have two, two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel? Well, all of those fall under that category except trapezoid. A trapezoid only has one pair of parallel sides, so it can't be parallelograms. Then we have quadrilaterals. Are all of these shapes shapes with four sides? Yes, they are. That could be our answer. But let's look at the last one. Are they all regular polygons? Um, a square, a rectangle, a trapezoid, and a rhombus. Do they all have sides measuring the same length? Not all of them do. So our best answer choice would be C. In this last problem, we see that the hierarchy diagram looks a little bit different, but it's still uh, different categories. So the problem says, which statement is true based on the geometry hierarchy diagram? Which statement is true? So it says all parallelograms are trapezoids. So let's look under parallelograms and see if um, the category above it is trapezoids. And we can see that it is not. So that is not a true statement. B says all rectangles are squares. Well, let's look at rectangles. Are they all squares? No, we can see in the diagram that squares are actually rectangles. So that is not a true statement. C says all rhombi are parallelograms. So let's look under rhombus. Are they all parallelograms? Well, we notice that they are, but we're going to read our last answer choice before we make a final decision. D says, all trapezoids are parallelograms. Well, are trapezoids parallelograms? 
No, they're actually under quadrilateral. So D is not a true statement. Our best answer choice here would be C.